Well, hello, everyone. I'm James Dobson, and you're listening to Family Talk. September 12th is National Grandparents' Day, and I wish everyone knew about it because grandmothers and grandfathers were designed by the Creator to play an important role in helping to raise their grandchildren, and moms and dads should honor them as such, and frequently that does not occur either at home or, unfortunately, at church, and we're going to talk about that. Obviously, it is a different responsibility than given to parents, but it's vital in the case of nurturance and care of children, especially in regard to spiritual training. I think I've mentioned this before on the air, but it's worth saying again. I was blessed to have a wonderful grandmother, my dad's mother, whom we call Little Mother, She weighed 97 pounds, and she knew what she was doing. And the other one is my great-grandmother, and she was called Nanny, and she also helped to raise me. Both these talked about Jesus all the time, it seemed, and they made him come alive in my mind. Little Mother and Nanny told me Bible stories and taught me to pray, and I loved both of them. And when I see them in heaven, I want to hug them and thank them for all they did to create a spiritual understanding that has influenced my life so far. Now, we're going to take a close look at grandparenting today with the help of a specialist in this topic. He is Larry Fowler, who is the founder and CEO of the Legacy Coalition, which is a ministry that exists to equip and encourage grandparents in the role that God would have them play. I'm told that there is an estimated 30 million Christian grandparents in the United States, and the people at Legacy Coalition are convinced that if mobilized and motivated, these senior members of families could actually help to start a national revival through their influence. Larry was my guest a while back, and I really love this guy. We're getting well acquainted, and he, that was a very popular program on Family Talk. Some of you will remember hearing it. So I'm invited him to be back with us again today. Welcome back, Larry. Good to have you here in the studio. We were on the telephone together last time. You finally got here in person. Well, I did, and it's a pleasure to be able to be with you and to, to just have a great talk together I think we share a lot of things in common, and particularly our appreciation for the grandparent role. Well, I am a grandparent, and that's why I appreciate what you're doing on behalf of grandparents everywhere. Before we went on the air, you talked about the fact that churches frequently overlook the resource that grandparents can be and the responsibilities churches have to them. Talk about that. Well, that was one of the things that prompted us starting our ministry. I, uh, I had been asking uh, churches all across the U.S. in my previous role in ministry, and I'd ask them, so have you ever thought about doing anything on grandparenting? And Dr. Dobson, 100% of the time, the answer came back that they had never thought about having a ministry to grandparents. You're not going to name them, but you no. could, and they are <laughs> big, influential churches that yes. minister yeah. to all aspects of the family, except yeah. this one. Uh, yeah, exactly. And many of the pastors were and are grandfathers, yet it had never occurred to them to actually have some teaching or some encouragement or something on the role of a Christian grandparent. Uh, in late June, you and I were at a conference together. I won't name the conference, but you got an award at the conference. I was there the day earlier to uh, be able to present the grandparenting ministry. And I started by asking them, this group of about 250 people, how many of you have ever heard a sermon on grandparenting? Dr. Dobson, three people raised their hands. Isn't that incredible? And then I said, so how many of you have ever attended a class or heard of a class on grandparenting? Same three people, nobody else. But that's what we were finding, that this role of a grandparent is just almost entirely overlooked by churches, yet they get it about how important it is to equip parents. Why, do you think? I don't know. And in fact, what's what's interesting is I get the slap in the forehead by senior pastors often. You know what I mean? They hit their forehead and say, how could I have missed this? (laughs) You know, how could I have overlooked it? Because 
it's not only very, very significant in the discipleship of children, but you know what? It gives purpose and meaning to the older third of their congregation at the same time. Yeah, it tells them what their heritage exactly. is. And they can tell about days when you were young and how yeah. different it was and tell them stories. Yeah. And, and it stops the crankiness. You know, if we don't feel connected to the mission of our church, then we end up becoming more tempted to complain. So you see, grandparent ministry is all about the kids. It's all about the kids, all about the teenagers. And if you have a pastor that says, I want to reach the kids, I want to disciple the teenagers, I want to reach them, well, so do we, so do grandparents. So it aligns the grandparents with the ministry of the church rather than putting them on the shelf. I talked about my two grandmothers. Did you have yeah. anybody in your family to do that for you? No, sort of, but not really. My mother's father was not a believer until about three weeks before he passed away. Really? My <laughs> grandfather, too, by the way. He lived about 100 miles away, and I don't ever recall a single conversation with him. Not one. About anything. Nothing. I think that when I went to visit, he talked with the adults, and I played with my cousins. How old were you? I was a teenager when he passed away. Maybe Even then, he didn't reach out to you. Didn't, didn't reach out. Now, my dad's dad lived on the same ranch with us. I grew up on a cattle ranch in western Nebraska. And my dad and grandfather were partners. And my, my grandfather, my dad's dad, was a wonderful, godly, deeply devoted Christ follower. But when I became an adult, I even kind of felt cheated by him because I learned from my older brother, who's nine years older than me, that this grandfather would go into town to buy supplies and take my brother along, which is a 40-mile drive in western Nebraska. And all along the way, he'd disciple him. I mean, he'd talk about, you know, spiritual things. He'd talk about how to treat a woman, all sorts of good stuff. But when I came along, he never did that with me. And that's one of the reasons that I want to be a different kind of grandfather. And it's one of the reasons we're doing this program today, because exactly. we want to yeah. encourage grandparents, both grandmothers and grandfathers, to invest themselves in the spiritual lives of their children. What more important thing could you do in those years of life than getting to know them and to talking to them about the Lord? Well, but it's hard to do for some people for some reason. Yeah. I've been involved in ministry all my life, as you have. Not at the level you have, Dr. Dawson, oh, but I, I've been involved in ministry all my life. And, and even though I value the opportunity to do that, the thing that I want more than anything else in this world is that my kids and my grandkids are going to be in heaven with me. Listen, if you don't get that job done, you'll never see them again. Yeah, yeah. That fact alone— yeah. Is, is the most significant thought I have ever had about family life. If you don't win your kids to Christ, you won't see them again. They won't yeah. be there. Yeah. What could be more important than that for parents and for grandparents? And of course, it's their decision. They on their own can choose to accept or reject Christ. But I want to do everything I can. Yeah. And you want to love them like crazy. And yeah, love them like crazy. Yeah, that's a you big You have seven grandkids. I have seven. What are their ages? They are six to 25. I've been through a few battles. Yeah. <laughs> and I'm in the middle of some. Mm. And Diane, your wife, is also deeply concerned oh. about this Oh, yes. Ministry. Oh, yes. What a wonderful, godly grandma she is. Did you start the Legacy Coalition? I did. And that was about five years ago. Yes. Before that, you did what? I uh, have been involved in children's ministry all my life. I was 39 years on the staff of Awana Clubs. But you felt like it wasn't enough, and you created the Legacy Coalition. Well, Tell grand us what it is. Equipping grandparenting is still children's ministry. Of course. It's just a different set of workers yeah, than I. Of course. I, I worked with church workers before. Now I work with some who actually have way more potential because they have a relationship with those children. If we can get grandparents to realize their potential and step up, we can really have an impact. Well, what's the coalition doing? Well, we equip grandparents through our resource and events. Uh, we think that you mentioned earlier 30 million Christian grandparents in America. 
There's not been much research done about Christian grandparenting, but what has been done says that uh, three out of four of them tend to take a more cultural view of grandparenting rather than a biblical view. And the culture of you is love your grandkids and, and spoil them and sugar them up and send them home. The biblical says, I'm going to be intentional about passing on faith to my grandkids. So our mission field is that three-fourths, and we want to help them to realize their potential, realize what Scripture says, and then equip them and engage them so that they are doing their very, very best to take those grandkids to heaven with them someday. You know, the evangelical church's primary motive and mission is to win people to Christ. Yes. Why wouldn't they be themselves invested in the yeah. people who are positioned best to help with that task? Well, they care. They just often don't know what to do or they haven't been challenged. My good friend, Josh Mulvihill, who has written a number of materials on grandparenting, says this, that the most common, the most frequent attitude of a Christian grandparent is pray and play. Yeah. In other words, they know to pray for their grandkids, and they do. But beyond that, they haven't thought about what specifically they could do, practical terms, to really have an impact in their grandkids' lives. Mm. Tell us more about the coalition. Well, we started in 2016, and and we started because of what we saw was this gap of, of national attention on the role of Christian grandparenting. And it was uh, my wife and I and some other wonderful, godly Christian leaders in children's and youth and family ministry. That I read that you have now 70 staff members and volunteers. High-level volunteers. Yeah, that th that's kind of our inner circle. So God is expanding our ministry, and we're seeing some amazing things happen. We do podcasts. We do webinars. We write books. We create resources. We do seminars, and we run the only national conference on Christian grandparenting. This makes sense to me, but I'm a grandparent, and I haven't done that job very well. Can you help me? The answer is yes, we certainly can. You visit our website and see some of the things that are there. Our website is LegacyCoalition.com, and we tell people, start with our webinar. Our webinar is called Grand Monday Nights. Every Monday night, it is a free online webinar where people can go and hear various speakers talk about grandparenting from all sorts of perspectives. We've had some amazing guests. Um, it becomes a very directed focus on the role of a Christian grandparent. We want to give them vision. We want to solve the problems that they have to overcome in their grandparenting. So that's a good place to start because it's free. It doesn't well, cost anything. <laughs> we will announce that again at the end of the program. Yeah, Our focus is on local churches and in particular, we would like to see local churches give validity to the role of a grandparent. It'd be a good topic for a sermon. It'd it? be a great topic for a sermon. In fact, one of the things that we do is we create a whole kit for churches to use. It's a free kit. It's slides for their screens. It's bulletin inserts. It's giveaways to the grandparents. It's everything because we want to equip them to give grandparents the recognition they deserve. Now, We've done something else because, you know, Hallmark or other people can pronounce any month, you know, such and such month. So we've pronounced Legacy Coalition the whole month of September as mm. Grandparents Month. Great idea. <laughs> Great idea. <laughs> no, we don't quite have why a cloud not, of— Why not a whole month? Yeah, why not? Yeah. And, and the reason why is because in local churches, they have lots of things they start in September. So we want to broaden it from one Sunday— to the whole month. So in case they can't honor grandparents on the 12th, they can another Sunday maybe. Well, we're talking to Larry Fowler, who has a heart for grandparents and has headed up this effort uh, for five years now, but really a lot longer than that, I'm sure, because you've been working with families and children for a long time. Let me tell you the question that I'm being asked now mm -hmm. and see if you've got an answer for it. The world is changing radically, mm -hmm. and it's not for the better, it's for the worse. The culture is sliding into chaos, and the Christian faith is no longer honored in places where 30 years ago it would have been. 
And the question that some parents are asking me now is that my husband and I, or my wife and I, are deeply committed to Christ, and we tried to honor him in our home, but our children are not Christian, Mm -hmm. and our grandchildren are being raised without God, and they're also being told godless things in school, LGBT and all that sort of thing. And my children don't want us to talk about the Lord. They don't believe what we taught them, Mm -hmm. and they're raising their kids in a godless way. Mm -hmm. And we don't know what to do. We feel Mm -hmm. it's so important for us to get to those kids, but we don't want to fight with our children who are now grown. What do you say to them? Well, the first thing I say is anybody that says that, they're not alone. It is something that... There are probably a few million Christian grandparents. No, that's why I'm hearing about it. Yeah, yeah. There are a lot of reasons to be urgent in our grandparenting. Life is short. Kids grow up fast. But the rapid change of culture is another. We got to we got to step it up now, grandparents. So here's my answer to the grandparents that have feel like that they they've tried and they haven't gotten anywhere, especially with their adult kids. The, the whole thing of adult kids being a barrier to teaching grandchildren is so very, very common. So if what they've been trying hasn't been working, it's time to try a new strategy. And what that may mean is it may mean, first of all, understanding that influence in the grandchildren's life comes first through a relationship with the parents. So if, if you're a grandparent, your adult children are not agreeing with you, one of the first things to understand is, if I don't strengthen the relationship with those adult kids, the barrier between me and my grandkids is just going to get higher. Yeah. It starts with relationships. It always it? starts with relationships. Influence always comes through relationships. If the adult kids are not accepting it, then you got to look at, so how, how is my approach? Maybe I need to try a different approach. And so often what we do as grandparents is we try their approaches. We want to tell them the truth, and we want to get them to accept the truth. Of course we do. But what's interesting is there's often cases in the Gospels where when Jesus wanted people to accept truth as a strategy, he led with grace first. And that is really significant. I I would say, grandparents, think about what you've been doing, because we can't change our adult kids. They can change themselves, the Holy Spirit can, but we can't. So you think about, well, what can I change? I can change me, and I can change my strategy. And I can live it in front of the kids. And I can live it. And that's that's part of it. Praying at the meals. Praying at the meals, but making sure that you're loving them unconditionally, too, and and exhibiting grace. Grace and love do not mean accepting the sin. Yeah. Grace and love do not mean accepting the sin. You know, I talked at the beginning of the program about my grandmother, little mother. Uh, she had subtle ways to get the message across to me. One of them was to give me a dollar every now and then. And when I was four years old, that was a lot of money. Sure, sure. And uh, it uh, was very exciting to me. The very first thing she would do is to say, now you need to pay tithe on this. Yeah. And I and she would explain what tithing yeah. is. Yeah. And the next Sunday I would put a dime. Yeah. And it was uh, just her way of illustrating there's some principles here that yeah. we live by. The most succinct verse in the Bible on the role of a grandparent is Deuteronomy 4.9. And Moses is speaking to the elders of the children of Israel right before they go into the promised land. And the first two words are this one, watch yourselves. Mm -hmm. And the most important thing that any grandparent can do is their own spiritual walk, their own testimony. And we've had stories too. I mean, we've had, I had this happen. I was teaching a class and when I got done, this very refined looking grandma stood up. She said, but Mr. Fowler, She says, my son has said I can see my granddaughter or I can talk to her about God, but I can never do both because the minute that I mention God to my granddaughter, I'll never be allowed to see her again. That's heartbreaking. That's heartbreaking. But is it hopeless? No, it's not hopeless 
but it is the greatest hurt of life. You know, sooner or later, your grandkids are going to hit a wall. They're going to run exactly. into a problem they don't know how to solve, yeah. and they may bring it to you. They will, especially when they get to be young adults. So yeah. what you do is you start preparing for that time. At the same time, you are looking at your own life saying, I want to make sure that I'm the most godly I've ever been in my life. Now, none of us are perfect, but shouldn't we be growing all the way to the grave in terms yeah. of our godliness? You know, shouldn't this be a thing where we're never stepping backwards in our commitment to the Lord? And we don't know. I mean, you think about the power. Let's let's assume there's a family where parents don't talk about God at all at home. It's never mentioned or anything like that. And the parents say to the grandparents, don't you ever talk about God? But the grandkids are able to go visit the grandparents. And when they go to visit, they see grandma bow her head silently before the meal, honoring what parents, the boundaries of parents have said. Grandkids have never seen that before. They don't know what that is. Yeah, yeah. That can be a memory that they remember for the rest of their life. Just that simple act. That's what a godly life does, is it gives them a memory so that when they become young adults and they're out from underneath their parents' authority, then they may very well come to grandpa and grandma especially if there's a loving relationship there. Boy, that is really valuable information. It's really important. But you know what? Our generation has grown up really valuing Scripture highly, and I do. And I don't mean to belittle that at all. But what that does is that it has developed in many of us the pattern of when there's a problem in our families, we want to apply the Word to the problem. And sometimes it's Scripture, sometimes it's our opinion. But in any case, we sometimes lead with truth, our truth or Scripture truth. And and that's very appropriate sometimes. Yeah. You can also put a Scripture on the wall of your home. You can. And that happened to me also. I had a great aunt. I would go over to see her, and her house spoke of Christianity. It yeah. spoke of the Lord. And she didn't have to talk about that. The walls spoke. And we should be decorating our homes with Scripture and with sayings of things we want our grandkids to remember. I have a question for you. Yes, sir. If you were to pick one phrase from Scripture that you would want your grandchildren to remember more than any other phrase of Scripture, what would you pick? I have to think about that. <laughs> well, I have one ready because yeah, I was ready. Do it. Yeah. So this is my wife's life verse. Trust in the Lord with all your heart. And do not lean on your own understanding. understanding. You see, that's one of the things that an intentional, purposeful grandparent will do is they'll think, okay, so what do I want my grandchildren to remember for the rest of your life? And then you repeat that over and over again. And you do. You put it on the wall of your house. Uh, you put it where they can see it. You do all those things. That's great encouragement for grandparents from Larry Fowler, founder of the Legacy Coalition, a ministry that equips grandparents to be godly influences in their children's and their grandchildren's lives. I'm Roger Marsh, and that concludes part one of Dr. Dobson's two-day conversation with Larry Fowler. Today, they emphasized the importance of having good relationships with your children and grandchildren, and they gave some practical tips for how you can really make that happen. Now, if you want to learn more about Larry Fowler or the Legacy Coalition, just visit our broadcast page at drjamesdobson.org forward slash broadcast. That's drjamesdobson.org forward slash broadcast broadcast, or you can give us a call at 877-732-6825. Before we close today's program, I want to bring to your attention the fact that September is Suicide Prevention Awareness Month. Since 1999, the overall suicide rate in the U.S. has increased by 35 percent. Suicidal thoughts can affect anyone, male or female, regardless of age or background. If you or someone you know is in crisis or is experiencing difficult or even suicidal thoughts, call the National Suicide Lifeline at 800-273-8255. That's 1-800-273-8255. Or visit suicidepreventionlifeline.org. 
The National Suicide Prevention Lifeline is a national network of crisis centers that provides free and confidential emotional support to people in suicidal crisis or emotional distress 24 hours a day, seven days a week. There is help and there is hope. And if you want to find a Christian counselor near you, you can visit connect.aacc.net. That's connect.aacc.net. For all of us here at the Dr. James Dobson Family Institute, I'm Roger Marsh. Please join us again tomorrow for another edition of Family Talk. This has been a presentation of the Dr. James Dobson Family Institute.